Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a pretty interesting show for you guys here today uh, that we definitely want to get into. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel if you haven't already. Now, today is going to be a pretty interesting show, right? We're going to be talking about the inner workings of the NBA. Now, one of the major challenges facing the league uh, current day is um, load management, right? There's kind of been this epidemic going around the NBA where players are missing games left and right. And some people are saying that is a construction that is built, you know, that is being, um, uh, what is it, uh, promoted by players. Some people are saying it's not really the players, it's the team. Whatever the case is, fans are not happy with the fact that all too often you see star players sitting out games when they're perfectly healthy just for rest purposes and the most egregious moments this takes place is when you see star players resting on road games that's when it becomes a real problem because usually these fans that you're resting on these games when when you're on the road they, they most likely only have a chance to see you one time when you go to that city right a normal NBA team plays 50% of his games at home and 50% on the road. So when this happens, it's a really bad look for the NBA and it's something that a lot of fans are upset with. So this morning, I uh, was coming through the internet here and I came across an article from fadeawayworld.net that basically shed some light on how the NBA plans to handle this issue uh, moving forward. So that's really what we want to get into here. Let me get into this article. It starts off with the headline. NBA reportedly close to adding anti-load management rule in new CBA. As one of the league's hottest new trends, load management has gotten a lot of attention this year. As more and more stars resort to sitting regular games for the sake of resting, the fans and the media have gone to increasingly further lengths to condemn it. Now, the NBA itself could be stepping in with a new rule, aiming to reward players who consistently show up and play for their teams. The article continues on. The NBA and the National Players Association are in advanced discussions on a new collective bargaining agreement, reports by Sham. And the two sides are getting closer to agreeing on a stipulation that a player must play a minimum number of regular season games to be eligible for major awards, sources tell uh, The Athletic. The NBA M- MBPA moving closer to agreement to establish rule that a player must play a minimum number of games to be eligible for major um, awards as a part of potential new collective bargaining agreement sources. Uh, say the article continues on. We don't know yet which awards would be affected by the rule, but it's safe to say we, we assume it will count towards every major accolade from MVP, all NBA to all star eligibility. Top league and player union officials held a competitive uh, committee meeting on Friday to discuss an issue both sides are jointly motivated on. The star players playing in more games and staying healthy enough so that the NBA can play its best talent on a night in and night out basis. Both sides are in agreement on on tying major awards to games played over the course of a season. Sources said the possibility a possibility the athletic Mike uh, first reported on February 14th continues on a little bit further load management has come under scrutiny from the nba i don't think fans get mad if you're making 30 40 50 million dollars playing basketball every night sell charles barkley but you can't make 30 40 50 million and sit out games i think is disrespectful to the fans so you heard uh what the report had to say there now i have another article that i want to quickly touch on to really explain to you guys um, the ramifications of what's going on here. And this in this particular article, franchisesports.co.uk, they're gonna, we're going to be talking about um, basically the Supermax. And I'm just going to give you guys a, a quick overview of what um, basically what a Supermax is. Uh, fans might hear the term Supermax a lot, especially during free agency. These lucrative contracts are usually handed out to superstars all around the league. But how do these contracts really work? Which players are eligible? Let's take a deeper dive into the NBA Supermax. NBA Supermax uh, explained the NBA Supermax salary get o- over $60 million. Teams are willing to offer significant money to retain their best players. After all, having a Supermax player on your roster can help you stay competitive in the playoffs. How do Supermax, how do NBA Supermax contracts uh, work? Before we get, we get 
to the Supermax, let's look at the max contract first. Players have at least six years of experience in the NBA that have at least six years of experience in the NBA are eligible for maximum salary starting at 25% of the team's cap. This goes up to 30% for players with seven or nine years of experience and goes up to 35% for players with 10 or more 10 or more years of experience. With the Supermax rule, players can achieve a 35% maximum salary without having 10 or more years of experience by meeting a certain criteria. The Supermax allows teams to resign qualified players to maximum five-year contracts worth up to 35% of the salary cap with an 8% increase each year. This also is known as the designated veteran player extension. As the name suggests, the contract the contract can only be given to veteran players that have at least seven years of experience in the NBA. Here's the most crucial part. What are the criteria for a player to be eligible for a supermax? Okay. Secondly, a player must meet, meet at least one of the supermax performance criteria. Be named to an all-star, uh, be named to an all NBA team in the most recent season or two in the last three seasons be named defensive player of the year in the most recent season or two in the last three years be named mvp in any of the three previous seasons did y'all hear what these articles did y'all hear what these reports just said do you understand now why this is a serious issue i'll tell you why as you all know i think in order for you to be eligible to win the scoring title, the threshold of games played needs to be 58 games. If you play at least 58 games and you're leading the league in scoring, you can win the award. If you play less than 58 games and you're leading the league in scoring, you cannot be considered for the leading score in the NBA. Now, in order for you, if the, if the NBA is going to tie some of these awards like all nba defensive player of the year mvp and other things like this to a number of games played what does this really mean it means that teams that constantly sit down stars and guys that constantly love to sit out games when they're perfectly healthy to play and they're only doing it because of rest purposes they're now going to be potentially jeopardizing the amount of money they can earn in the future by missing out on these awards. So essentially, what this new agreement does is, number one, it encourages players to play more because if you play more, you're going to be eligible to gain to get bigger contracts and earn more money. And number two, if you play less, i.e. your team sitting you down for whatever reason, you're going to be potentially missing out on tens of millions of dollars. Now, some people say, but you're saying that they, these guys are going to be missing on hundreds of millions of dollars or compound it. Compound it. Do it across the league. All the players that are going to be missing out on those all NBA teams or on MVP and all those other things and the top runnings because they're missing games. So to me, this is a good way to combat it. In my personal opinion, I don't even think you guys have seen the real part of this thing yet. This thing has not started yet. They're going to get into the Ben Simmons. There are going to be so many things that's going to be addressed in the next CBA. And I think this is just the first step. So the question to you guys is, what do you think about this new report? And do you think it's something that's a step in the right direction? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comment section. And we catch you guys on the next show.